they begin to grow and are considerably larger in about five days. After two or three weeks, the procercoids are almost half a millimeter long. The body of the procercoid is muscular, contains numerous calcareous corpuscles, and the anterior end is characterized by an invagination and the presence of glands. A copepod can harbor several fully grown procercoids. Copepods are an important constituent of the plankton life in streams and lakes. They serve as food for small fishes. Copepods infected with procercoids of the broad tapeworm may be eaten by minnows and the larvae released in the intestine of the fish. Or minnows containing live procercoids or infected copepods recently ingested may be eaten by small game fish. Minnows and small game fish are in turn eaten by species of pike. In pike, the common fish hosts of the broad tapeworm, the final larval stage develops. This larva, the pleurocercoid, lies free among the muscle fibers. When removed into saline solution, some of the pleurocercoids become very active. They vary in size, some reaching a length of five centimeters. The pleurocercoid is cylindrical and glistening white in appearance. The most striking morphological feature is the partially developed anterior region bearing a dorsal and ventral groove. The lips of the ventral groove are seen. Live pleurocercoids of Diphilobothrium latum are unwittingly ingested by man when infected fish are eaten raw or when infected fish are improperly cooked. When living pleurocercoids are eaten, they survive passage through the stomach. In the small intestine, they attach by their anterior ends to the mucosa and grow rapidly. In two or three weeks, the worm is several feet long and sexually mature. Since Diphilobothrium latum sometimes attains a length of 30 feet, the worm loops back and forth on itself in the intestine. The anterior end is attenuated and the remainder of the body ribbon-like. The whole organism is known as a strobola. The strobola is made up of three distinct regions. The scolex, or head, the short neck, and the long body. The scolex and neck comprise only the first few millimeters of the strobola. The scolex is muscular. It has two grooves with membranous edges dorsally and ventrally located. From these grooves, called bothria, is derived the generic name diphilobothrium. The bothria are for attachment and anchor the adult worm to the mucosal surface of the intestine. Just behind the scolex is the short, unsegmented neck region. Behind the scolex and neck, segmentation begins. This is the region of the immature and undifferentiated broad proglottids. Superficially, these proglottids reveal no internal structures.
Following the region of the immature proglottids, the strobula is sexually mature. The mature proglottids, which contain both male and female reproductive organs, show distinct centrally located uteri resembling rosettes. These characteristic rosettes are of diagnostic importance, Diaphilobothrium latum being the only tapeworm of man with this feature. These uterine rosettes are filled with thousands of eggs. Through birth pores, the eggs escape into the lumen of the host's intestine, as many as a million per day from a single worm. Broad tapeworm infections are diagnosed by finding eggs in the feces. At the posterior end of the strobula is the region of senile or spent proglottids, from which most of the eggs have already been discharged.